frozen land of prophecy and legend. The frozen land part's very appropriate for me right now. Um, it's quite cold out right here, right now. Well, cold by standards for me. Uh, I live in a very, a very uh, mild part of Canada, but we're getting a bit of snow here right now, and it's quite windy, so it's positively blizzardish out there right now, which is actually very uncommon for this part of the world at this time of year. So this feels thematically appropriate. Uh, the paths between realms have been opened, uh, and war has broken out between gods. If you hear that, maybe you can hear the wind at the window. That's the bushes outside, scratching against the window in the wind. Uh, war has broken out between gods, mortals, and monsters, as it does. Distinguish yourself in combat, and your story will be retold for generations. May your saga live on. We have an alternative art premium foil reflections of Lityara card. Okay. Ten uh, draft boosters. A card box. Uh, twenty premium foil and twenty regular basic lands. Um, and the special oversized spin down life counter plus two reference card, <laughs> whatever reference card is. Um, but, um, looks like they've done away with the deck boxes. Fair enough. It's too bad though, because those made really nice noises, like nice tapping sounds, but. Okay, so this is, uh, all just kind of in this sleeve, so.
might even be a little small for that though. Weird. Oh well. That's, that's something anyway. Okay, so I guess all the actual action takes place in this box here. The uh, card box. That big die making a bunch of noise in there, thunking around. There it is. Okay, that's actually pretty freaking cool. They weren't lying when they said it's oversized, and it's got this kind of gilded. Oh, attacking. 
or something. one land of each type. Like in terms of art. Just do that. But, um, maybe there's different ones in the foils. Or maybe there's only one of each type in the set. I don't know. So that's 20, 20 basic lands. Then we've got some foil cards here. We've got the of Lichara, which looks like a pair of, like, dragon masks, almost, doesn't it? So it's not a land, obviously, it's a five-mana blue enchantment. It says, as reflections of Lichara enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. A copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. So, that actually sounds pretty darn good. If you're running a tribal deck. Huh. It's like a two-for-one kind of thing. The masks float downstream uh, toward the mirror lake, where faces arise to wear them. Ooh, spooky. And the foil is very nice and shiny. Very colorful. Uh, it does look like there's only one piece of land art for each land type in this set. But we just got the shiny version here. I will say that uh, the Aurora Borealis definitely look nice in foil.
cold snap, cold snap maybe. And by more recently, I still mean like, you know, eight years ago maybe. <laughs> or something, I don't remember, but I, I do remember snow-covered lands being a mechanic, so it looks like that's come back in some form. Uh, if the snow-covered source was spent to cast the spell, um, that permanent doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. That's a uh, four form. That could be somewhat useful. It seems a little expensive for what it is, but I don't know how common snow covered land, whatever the snow mechanic is. Um, I don't know how easy it is to get mana from a snow source. Maybe there are no snow-covered lands, I'm just guessing. King Harald's Revenge. A three mana green sorcery. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus one plus one for each creature you control and gains trample. It must be blocked this turn if, you, if able. Potentially pretty good. We will destroy the pretenders and reclaim the divinity of the Einir. Definitely could work in an elf type of deck. Bind 
the monster. One blue mana, enchantment. Enchant creature. When bind the monster enters the battlefield, it tap enchanted creature. It deals damage to you equal to its power. Enchanted creature does not untap during its controller's untap step. Okay, alright. So it's like a perma tap kind of thing, but you do take damage from that creature. Seraph's snarl of rage shook the world tree. Of 
the saga. Choose three cards in each graveyard. Their owners shuffle those cards into their libraries. Huh. I'm really not quite sure what the value. There's probably something here I'm not quite grasping, but you'll mill three cards. You can take up to two of them if there's no permanent to put them in your hand. And then you can shuffle three cards back into your library. Interesting. I like the art. It's like this three-step saga carved in stone. Mechanically, pretty interesting. I'm not sure I quite appreciate the value of this one, but I'm sure I'm sure some players will find some very interesting things to do with it. The Bloodline of Pretender. An artifact creature shapeshifter, oh my. For three colorless. With uh, the changeling ability, this card is every creature type. I think we've seen that in previous sets. I don't think that's unique here. As Bloodline Pretender enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Bloodline Pretender. Cool. Some very strong tribal themes in this deck. I always like playing tribal decks. Okay. Finally, our rare is the Cosmos Charger. It is a four mana blue horse spirit. A 3 3. Ooh, the wind blows. With a flash, so you can play it whenever you can play an instant and flying. And it says here, foretelling cards from your hand costs one less and can be done on any player's turn. Okay, that, yeah, that could be pretty darn good. You remember the foretell mechanic? Let us play a card for um, less than its full cost and then um, play it face down and then turn it up for its foretell cost on a later turn. But this would allow you to, you know, play a card for its foretell cost on your opponent's turn for cheap. For instance, that uh, that one creature we saw before, I think, had a foretell cost of two. That would go down to one. And then you could play it. Uh, you could turn it. Sorry, I think I'm getting the terminology wrong. But you can play it for two and then turn it up for zero, basically, on your turn. Anyway. Uh, and this card itself also has Fortel. So it looks like Fortel always costs two, two mana. And then the the cost of turning it uh, right side up varies by card. It's kind of like Morph, sort of. Except I, I don't think it counts as a creature or anything while it's turned face down. No, it doesn't, because you're technically exiling it. Cool. I could definitely see that being pretty good. Okay, so yes. So, we have all those basic lands we saw earlier, and I was wondering why we had only one of each type. The answer is because we've also got snow-covered lands with their own unique art and such. A basic snowland. I, I love the interplay here of, you know, the lava erupting from the volcano onto the snowy mountainside. Cool. Okay. That's pretty neat, though. Well, shall we uh, do another one? I think we shall. Got a suave devil looking kind of creature on here. <laughs> All right. 
is a kind of barbarian type looking guy here. Or berserker, okay. The Tuscary Firewalker. Three mana human berserker in red. With a boast. I think this might be a new mechanic for this set. Boast. Uh, pay one and exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Activate this ability only if this creature attack this turn and only once each turn. Uh, weird. So it, it basically lets you draw a card off the top of your deck and exile it, but you, you can play it if you want, but then I guess if you don't, it's permanently exiled. Well, not permanently. It's exiled until whatever. Uh, but it only works if this guy attacks. He's a 3-2. Torolf blessed me with fire. I am worthy of Starnheim. He does look very burning. Very fiery. An X-Guard Braggart. A dwarven warrior. A 4-mana 3-3 three, three in white. Who also has boast. A boast cost of two. Uh, oh, but his boast is different. Oh, I see. Untap X card Braggart. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Activate this ability only if this creature attacked, and only once each turn. So every time he attacks, you have the opportunity to pay the boast cost, and then something happens. Cool. Cool, cool. Heavy. <laughs> the Troll King of Mosterund was heavy, and I tossed him five miles. I like the flavor, again, of Boast. That's fun. Depart the Realm. Two mana blue instant. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. With a foretell cost of one island. My home calls to me. I must go. <laughs> Makes me think of like the my people need me memes. An Immerstar Raider. A two mana red demon and berserker creature. With two power, one toughness. One Immerstrom Raider enters the battlefield. You may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Hmm. Okay, sure. The demons took no captives and claimed no spoils. They sought only to destroy. The Wither Crown. Something about this picture is giving me mad vibes. Um, or not, no, um, not Denethor. Um, oh gosh, I'm blanking here. Well, kind of Denethor vibes. He was a sort of withered, greasy dude, but um, <laughs> the king of the row here, I'm like, can't I? It'll come to me. I'm blanking right now, but anyway. When he was all, uh, you know, being corrupted by Wormtooth. And he's all like sunken eyes, old looking. Anyway, Theoden. There we go, Theoden. <laughs> that took a while. Uh, two mana, black aura. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature has base power zero. And as at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless you sacrifice this creature. We'll see each other again soon. Egon, god of death. Yikes. A masked vandal. That's one hell of a mask. Look at that thing. Spooky. Two mana green shapeshifter creature. 1-3 with the changeling. We've seen 
this mechanic before. It is every creature type. When masked vandal enters the battlefield, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Seems like an alright, you know, fair trade, potentially. There's lots of exiling going on in this set, I've noticed. Lots of manipulating things from mint to exile. The Vault Robber, a two-mana red dwarven rogue creature. The one and the three stats. And here again, more exiling. You can pay one and tap this creature uh, to exile a creature card from your graveyard and create a treasure token. Oh my. It's an artifact with tap it and sacrifice this artifact to add one mana of any color. Huh. Fascinating. The dwarves believe works of art should be passed down the generations, not buried with their dead. Iron Verdict. Oh, this guy's about to have a bad day. <laughs> this is giving me Skyrim opening vibes. Like my ancestors are smiling on me, Imperial. <laughs> um, a three mana um, white instant. Iron Verdict deals five damage to target tapped creature. And it's got a foretell cost of one white mana. You'll rate nothing but mist in Istvel. Dog in pursuit. Uh, four mana black enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. But in a big multiplayer game, that could be, you know, decent, I guess. Kaya had stalked countless horrific foes, but never one that killed with such callous precision and twisted creativity. Big yikes. Okay, we're into our uncommons. We have a frost auger. A snow creature, human wizard. I don't know if we've seen any snow creatures yet. Uh, one island, one blue mana. Pay one snow mana and tap it to look at the top card of your library. If it's a snow card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. Interesting. So, I guess you could build a whole snow-themed deck, I mean, that makes sense, but... From the barest crack in the ice, she teases forth a swirling, living map of the cosmos. Dang, that's pretty cool. It's pretty neat art. Uh, the Boreal Outrider. Elf card. Another snow creature. A three mana green elf warrior. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if. Uh, sorry, what? Whenever you cast a creature spell, if snow mana of any of that spell's colors was spent to cast it, so one, one snow mana in this case, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional. Plus one, plus one counter on it. Oh, uh, cool. So, it makes all your snow creatures, or not even your snow creatures, it makes creatures uh, cast with uh, snow mana more powerful. I like it. We've got Terragrid's Shadow. Very dark art. Like literally dark 
card art, not like the dark arts. <laughs> um, uh, it was five mana black instant. Each player sacrifices two creatures, and it's got a foretell cost. Terrigrid, god of fright, never acknowledges her own shadow or its murderous deeds. Yikes. Oh, cool. We've got another saga. This time it's our rare. Uh, for one colorless, two white mana, and one black. We can play Theria's Retribution. And uh, it says, just like before, as the saga enters and after your draw step, add a lore counter. And sacrifice it after after three turns, basically. Create a 4-4 four, four white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance. Okay, dang. That's good value right off the bat. On turn two, until the end of turn, angels you control gain a tap to destroy target creature with power less than this creature's power. Ooh, righteous. And on turn three, angels you control gain double strike until end of turn. That's cool. I didn't realize that angels were sort of a tribal type in this set. But, uh, art is very angelic. Very cool. I like how these are made to look like, you know, carvings. That's really neat. Then we've got a snow-covered mountain. Different art than we got last time. And we've got something shiny here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's actually uh, the first guy in our pack again, but just in foil. I think a scary firewalker. I will say the foil looks good with all those embers. All that fire. Boast. 
fun. Sacrifice. 
sacrifice that to make mana. Sure. Kind of neat. I like the art. Memory 
days of a time when the old gods ruled the realms. Cool. And a snow-covered island with like a long ship amongst the icebergs. It's got like kind of a ghostly looking sail there. a double-faced card. so busy with work that uh, I didn't do any special video for it or a stream or anything like that. I, I do apologize. I just couldn't really spare the time this year, but um, yeah, eight years. It's a long time. So it seems kind of appropriate to be doing a, a throwback like this, which is similar to some of the very first stuff I did on my channel all those years ago. Anyway, like I said, Hope you enjoyed it, and I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now, my friends.